God bless you. John Saber here with a special friend, a special, special friend, Jeff Staples, Apostle Jeff Staples, well known among the city and internationally, actually. And I just welcome you, brother. Well, thank you so I much. Welcome you. Thank you so much, Chad. Yeah. Good to be with you today. Yeah, it's good to be with you as always. <laughs> you have so much to offer the body. Oh, well, thank you so, so much, much, brother. So much. Thank you. God is good. So, what have you been doing in the last well, uh, 40 years? Well, most. Uh, <laughs> Uh, many of you that are watching today may be aware of the Bible study ministry, a rainbow evangelistic ministries that we did in local corporations and government offices for 30 years. Okay. And uh, this year I'm coming up on nearly 42 years of various kinds of pastoral experience. Uh, emerged in the office of the prophet in 79 and uh, apostleship in the 1990s. And uh, we've recently been ministering to some of our network partners in the nation of the Philippines. We were in seven different cities in January and February of this year. Okay. And we also engaged in some typhoon relief uh, assistance there while we were there. And also took a little mini vacation while we were there, my wife, Nana, and I. Yes, very good. I know you Thank mentioned you. the word apostolic. Yes. You know, which sometimes is confusing to the body. Sure. The difference between apostolic and apostle or yeah. title or the, the move of God or the spirit. What is the difference? Yeah. Well, I, I think I'd like to, first of all, make the distinction between being an apostolic people okay. and, and standing in the office of apostleship. For example, a, a person could preach well, but it doesn't make them a pastor. Okay. Uh, you could prophesy, mm -hmm. and the body is called to prophesy according to the New Testament, but it does not mean that that gift sets you in the office of a prophet. Now, the apostolic is the father heart of God, yeah. and uh, it's, it's operational from a kingdom perspective rather than simply a church perspective. When you see an apostolic pastor, his, his understanding revelatorily is that he pastors the whole city, the whole region, not just at local church. It's a church without walls. Okay. And of course, there are apostles in the marketplace. There are apostles in government circles. There are apostles, of course, in the church. And of course, there are many that believe that the, the whole apostolic order after the first century church, okay. after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, has passed away. But I have yet to be able to find anybody that's been able to show me precise scriptures interpreted appropriately to indicate that the fivefold ministry offices have passed away. And it's very clear in the book of Ephesians that the fivefold ministry offices are necessary until the body comes to the full stature of Christ Jesus into that unity that mm -hmm. Jesus Christ prayed for in St. John chapter 17. So the signs of apostleship, for example, is most apostles are church planters. And you have many apostles, of course, that uh, are mentoring and raising up uh, younger generations uh, uh, spiritual sons and daughters. Uh, there are those that travel internationally, those that cover a very specific local region or a nation. Uh, there are apostolic territories, spheres of influence. I really love the Mars Hill address of the Apostle Paul. When Apostle ministers, he can take a great deal of the Word of God, simplify it, lay it down in some basic principles that even non-believers would be able to grasp the concepts, the apostolic foundational concepts of the faith. And the Mars Hill Address in the book of Acts is an excellent one to look at to see what apostolic preaching looks like. So an apostle teaches and preaches in a way that is very foundational. And uh, we've mentioned the church planting already. We've also talked about the fact that uh, apostles many times 
are raising up spiritual sons and daughters and providing oversight to these sons and daughters and have networks of churches. And uh, the United States is considerably behind, especially Africa and Asia, where apostolic leaders had been raised up even previously. So we're all called to have the Father heart of God and to have dimensions of things that I've spoken about. But the reality is, is that not everybody is called to the office. That's a governmental office as opposed to having a particular uh, aspect of your Christian faith uh, You mentioned the, the word unity, Christ Jesus, yeah. which is basically much of my studies is yeah. unity in Christ Jesus. Yes. As, as opposed to Jesus Christ. When yes. you put the Christ over the Jesus, <laughs> yeah. the spirit over the flesh. And just to yeah. teach that to the quote, quote, church has been yeah. many times a challenge, yeah. many times a challenge. Yeah. You mentioned as far as your, your travels, you were talking before, and your travels apostolically, if you would, are all over internationally. Yeah, yeah and, and it's really about training up leaders, mm -hmm. uh, whether they are pastors or training up uh, church workers. Um, the apostle really has the father, father heart of God. The Bible says, you know, in, in all you're getting, get knowledge. And, you know, the body needs to be trained up overseas. Many of the pastors have not gone to Bible school okay. or gone to seminary, and in some ways that's a blessing. Uh, when I was at the uh, Jitkoi gathering, which was the World Evangelism gathering in Seoul, South Korea in May of 1995, I met pastors that were 25 years old, had only been uh, born again for three years, and they were already emerging as apostles. God was doing a quick work. The churches was growing quickly. And, you know, the key thing is our submission to the Lord. It's all about our obedience. It's all about hearing his voice. I, I can't focus on whether people accept or reject what I say. I need to focus on hearing what God is saying and simply say, it's, it's no different than what Jesus said. The words you hear me speak are the words of my Father. The acts that you see me do are what my Heavenly Father has commanded me to do. And that's, that's been something that has been very helpful to me over the years, to have that proper focus, not on the people, not being a man pleaser. Certainly you serve people through the words, uh, word and the giftings. But the reality is, it's all about our relationship with the Father through Christ Jesus with the facilitation of Holy Spirit. And you find much difference in your international as opposed to being here in the United States, even with the- International is actually much easier than mm -hmm. here in the U.S. Uh, we have just so many distractions here. Um, uh, we have far more miracles many times. Uh, and that's another sign of the apostolic signs, mm -hmm. wonders, and miracles. Uh, Paul said it so beautifully. He said, you know, I've ministered to you in the word, but now there's going to be a demonstration in power. And of course, raising those from the dead. I've had some uh, very close to that. I've had some that were very dear to death, but mm -hmm. I'm believing the Lord for that exquisite moment where I will lay hands on those that have died and seen them raised up. The other thing, as I get older, I'm really looking forward to is translation. Being transported, translated from one physical place to another without going through airport lines and all the rest of it. So the older I get, the more I have faith for translation. <laughs> Beyond Enoch, right? Beyond yeah. Enoch. Yeah. And, and for example, when I go to especially third world countries mm -hmm. where there are not the medicines, there's not the uh, uh, all sorts of medical aids, uh, you know, people are just very similar to in the Bible. Uh, if you don't have crutches, if you don't have a wheelchair, you're basically dragging yourself through the, through the street and mm -hmm. you're a beggar in the street because there are simply not the governmental programs uh, to help you out. And we're so blessed in this country on one hand, but it's made our dependency sometimes not to be on Christ, but on government and programs and all the rest of it. So 
I actually have to go overseas sometimes just to get away from what you bump up against in your own territory and as you go overseas because the demons in other areas are not as familiar with you. This is why you can have success getting away from your home territory because people get too much of a familiarity with you when you're in your home territory. And it's good to, to go and minister and let them miss you a little bit. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're interna back. You mentioned the word international in your travels, your school, yeah. but you've also done that locally too. I yes. Mean, you're, you've yeah. established churches that are... Yeah, lo local churches, lo right. and uh, I've very much enjoyed doing that. Now, I didn't start out that way okay. um, over 40 years ago. I started out actually as an evangelist, and then I moved mm -hmm. to Bible teacher mm -hmm. and pastor mm -hmm. and prophet an apostle. Uh, there's, there's been that progressiveness. Um, and, and each one of these offices, I believe, has equal standing uh, before God. It's not mm -hmm. that the apostle is greater than, say, the evangelist. Every office of ministry has a precise function within the body of Christ and within society at large. And so I've just enjoyed, uh, I don't try to uh, argue with people, well, what, what makes you think you're an apostle? If the signs of apostleship scripturally are evident, I don't need to be defending that. I simply need to be what God has called me to be. And whether there's an acceptance, not everybody's going to accept you in the gifting or in the office that you stand in, and that's okay. If there's opposition, that's fine, because at the end of the day, the doors that God has opened, no man can shut, and the mm. doors he's shut, no man can open. If I don't have God's advocacy, and I have a thousand men advocating influentially on my behalf, I'd rather take God's advocacy over man's advocacy. Amen. And I noticed yeah. that, uh, and I know that you minister not only in prisons, but also to the prostitutes. You yes. minister to just a yep. variety of variety people. Variety of people. Variety. How did you get involved and, with the prison ministry? Well, or the you know, again, it. Uh, I like to think of Isaiah 61, okay. ministering to the captives, mm -hmm. uh, to those who really are in need in our society. Uh, you know, it's interesting. There are people that are messed up, and they know they're messed up. Okay. And there are a lot of people that are very religious and think they have need of nothing. And unless God prepares their heart to receive you, you simply, one of the things I ask for every day is grace, grace, favor, favor. Because without God's favor and without his grace, mm -hmm. you know, people don't care who you are or what you're going to say until they know who you are. And just like Jesus at the well, we have to connect, first of all, in natural things like water right. in order to begin to speak on supernatural things. So, you know, uh, the older I get, the less time I want to waste. Um, I don't need to defend myself. I don't need to um, lay out some big dissertation regarding what I am or not. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, God knows who and what I am. And again, you know, I think we can all humbly say we were called to offices, not because we were perfect, but by the grace of God, by a faith response to Lord, send me. Mm -hmm. He puts the passion for nations in our hearts. And I've, I've pastored uh, immigrant groups here to the United States. I believe that one of the signs of apostleship is that you have great faith, or I'm sorry, great favor okay. with all nationalities and races. There's mm -hmm. a very transcendent aspect to that. And of course, we're beginning to see that emerge in the pastoral office and certainly in the prophetic, uh, because God is no respecter of person. Regarding of economic class or race or ethnicity, God desires that all be saved, that every knee bow and tongue confess, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You had mentioned earlier about your establishment, or God using you in the establishment of an Arabic church. Yes, I, church. Uh, we've, 
one of our church members has mm -hmm. been very actively involved, in fact, several of them uh, okay. in my previous congregation, in helping to establish uh, with a very fine young Lebanese pastor, uh, okay. Pastor Salim, and they have services. They are renting the United Methodist Church right here in Clawson, Michigan at 14 in Maine to do their uh, services on Sunday after the United Methodist Congregation has their 11 a.m. service. Do they do it in Arabic or they English They do it in both? Arabic, and um, I've had Arabic Bible studies for many years. Okay. And I've had a special calling to Arab people for close to 20 years, and I have a Iraqi Chaldean spirit-filled interpreter that's been with me for nearly 25, 30 years and translates for me when I preach. And of course, the closer that person is to you, when you preach, they're, they're able to catch your spirit and your passion and, you know, they do such a good job. If you're dealing with somebody that you've never had interpreting for you before, it can get interesting. And I've, I've had some excellent uh, interpreters overseas, I've had some not so excellent. But it sure is wonderful when you, when you have somebody that is not only able to translate, but really is able to catch your heart and spirit in the translation. Do you still be, are you still involved with the prison ministry? Or not uh, and, and what I'm doing now, I'm working with juvenile offenders at Calumet okay. Center as a volunteer, mm -hmm. strictly a volunteer. Calumet Center is a juvenile detention facility down in Highland Park. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I do uh, go on certain Tuesday nights to minister to those young men there in the Calumet Center. And much of the other time is just traveling internationally? Traveling and working locally and of course I still do a certain amount of counseling and uh, lots of prayer ministry and working interdenominationally as well as non-denominationally. Um, you know, under the Greek, you're a Greek. To the Roman, you're a Roman. To the Jew, you're a Jew. You, you know, God will open all kinds of doors. And the God that I know is a transcendent mm -hmm. God. He's a God where, you know, we have so many limits we want to put on God sometimes, not intentionally all the time. But whatever the Lord speaks to my heart to do, and I've been given the grace and the anointing and the favor to do it. I'm going to go ahead, whether it's an orthodox or unorthodox. For example, I used to be the chaplain at one of the uh, topless uh, bars here in Detroit, and uh, penthouse club. And people would mm -hmm. say to me, "Oh, that's that's kind of a controversial thing." But basically, what I was doing. I was not ministering to the dancers while they were dancing. I was ministering to them before the club really opened up. And I'll, I'll never forget, there was a gentleman walking into the club the first day that I proposed it to the owners of several clubs. And uh, he said, oh, you're going to love the girls in this place. And I said, yeah, but for other reasons. <laughs> That's very good. And uh, he said, well, you know, what do you mean by that? I said, well, uh, everybody needs to be pastored. And I hope to be the chaplain at the penthouse club here on 8 Mile. And I was very grateful to the owners of the club that they accepted me. I had gone to another club that is now closed where when I walked up there and uh, I said to the young man, the bodyguard at the front door, I, he said, well, what would you want to talk to the owner about? I said, I'm a local church pastor and I would like to be the chaplain for the uh, club. And he looks at me and he got tears in his eyes. The young man that I met outside the other club, as soon as I said that I was a pastor, he began to confess his sins. He said, I, I'm really addicted to this. I'm really addicted to these girls. And I prayed with him right out front of the club. And, uh, you know, I look for places where typically ministry has not taken place. I don't think that we should give 
private domain to Satan in any area of human life. I believe the whole earth is going to be full of Christ's ambassadors. Mm -hmm. That there's not, whether it's government or private industry or topless bars or wherever, I believe the Lord will appoint folks to go because when your righteousness is not external and someone touching you cannot make you dirty. Most of these prostitutes I found, I mean, there were those that were caught up, and I'm not saying any specific club, but there are those that are caught up in being humanly trafficked. They're doing this against their will. There are others that are doing it. Uh, they started out wanting to pay for college educations or other kinds of things. And, uh, but then, you know, it became more than what they thought it would become. And some of them went into prostitution. Uh, not that the clubs endorse that necessarily. Uh, but I just, I, I, I used to go home and mm. weep after talking to some of the women. Many of them were molested as young people. Many of them have gotten caught up in drugs and alcohol. And uh, it's a fantasy world. The clubs is a fleshy Disneyland. Mm. A very, very fleshy Disneyland. And I used to love to sit up there with customers and, you know, they'd say what they were, you know, I'm uh, executive with. And uh, so what do you do? Well, I'm actually the chaplain of the club. And uh, some of them look like... Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop drinking because I think you just said <laughs> <laughs> that you're the chaplain of the club. That's awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> but it's what the purpose and well, plan Well, you bring light God. into that, dark that's places. That's, you, told us to you do. know, that's, I mean, what good is light going into light? No value. Light going into darkness is what it's all about. And there are so many. I mean, I personally believe that every single topless club in the city, in, in the region, should have a local church pastor that is ministering, called of God, because not everybody is called to that, because there's obviously pitfalls and dangers. But when you're really called to something, I believe that there's a special guard and a special gifting available, a special grace to be effective in ministering like ministering to inmates all these years before I ever worked for the corrections department. And, and I was a manager within the corrections department, not a chaplain. And so, uh, but it gave me many opportunities to minister when I was a board of education mm -hmm. member in Detroit. Many opportunities to minister to school administrators, teachers, students. I loved it. Whatever doors God opens. I believe what you're saying to the audience, beside yeah. to myself, is that wherever we're placed, yeah. we can be a blessing. We should yeah. minister the gospel of yeah. Jesus Christ. And over the years, there may be various. I pastored in the inner city of Detroit for nearly 30 years mm -hmm. before God said, now I want you to take this internationally and I will send immigrants to you and African-American, white, and immigrant groups will come together and worship together and minister together as teams. Awesome ministry. And some of the African-Americans that we took on our mission trips, this is the first time they'd ever been outside of the U.S. And it was so great for the people of those other nations mm -hmm. to see these am African-American ambassadors for Christ. Because so much of the News that has come out of Detroit, of course, has been very negative, and there's a fear factor. And, and I have so enjoyed watching prejudices and uh, negativities just melt in the presence of God's love and power manifested. Always been good. Many times within the body, you have self-appointed offices, if you would, or yeah. titles that yeah. are given to the people. And I think that there I know, and you do too, that many times that that title of apostle just being placed on a quote, quote, card has, has been an obstacle. And it's yeah. a, to, to, 
And I don't put that on my business card. I, I basically, what I've done over the years, it's, it's kind of like Jesus saying, who do you say that mm -hmm. I am? What, what am I to you? Maybe I'm just Brother Jeff to you. Maybe I am an apostle to you. Maybe I'm more of a prophet to you or an evangelist or teacher or pastor. Um, I, I, I just think there needs to be zero time spent on defending whatever God has, has called you into. Basically, if you call yourself an apostle but are not, I believe that you will fail at that because God's advocacy is not there and the anointing for that office is not there. And it, why embarrass yourself? Why embarrass yourself if, if you're not really something? I mean, anybody can go, go around impersonating anything mm -hmm. in society. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a fellow by the last name of Street in the corrections department. He impersonated doctors, lawyers, and he was the best impersonator of people in different vocations I've ever seen in my life. Hmm. And uh, I used to talk to this guy. <laughs> wow. And I mean, he literally could have been nearly anything he ever wanted to be because he was so excellent, so sharp, so smart. And one of the reasons I work with offenders, there's a lot of people that have tremendous potential, tremendous potential. And they, we need to see them brought out of the bondages and into the marvelous light of the love of Jesus Christ. Since you're here in the Detroit area, your vision for Detroit is... Oh, I love Detroit. I know you do. I love Detroit. <laughs> I was called here, uh, I came here two weeks after the riot of 67. The riot of 67 was my burning bush experience. Mm. And it, God spoke to me and said to me, the next time Detroit burns, it will be with a fire that no man can put out. It'll be wow. the fire of the Spirit of God. And Detroit will become a great exporter of the sons, the manifested sons of daughters of God, warriors. Awesome. Warriors. Awesome. Yeah. I just thank God for your time. I thank oh, God thank for your you, heart. Brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, know, you for God yours. Using you. I, I, just, I just praise <laughs> God for you. I just thank God for you, your oh, heart, thank your compassion. You. Have you worked with, with the other immigrants, or Chinese, Indians yeah, at I, all? Uh, Native Indians? Ba or? Basically, there's four basic. I, I obviously don't speak all the different languages, mm -hmm. but this is the thing that I tell people. I said, number one, be comfortable around people, especially people of other nationalities and races. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't show that uncomfortableness. Secondly, know their history. Thirdly, eat their food. And fourthly, love their children. If you do that, mm. you will have an open door. You don't have to speak the language, but you do have to display, I think, those four distinct qualities. And uh, I do want to say one more thing about yes. Detroit, if I could, uh, yes. John. I had a very powerful uh, vision one time, and I'll make this very quick. Mm -hmm. But I saw a trophy case, and I prophetically began to minister out of this. It had major corporations, and in the back, it had one little rugged cross. And as the hand of God ta kept taking these corporations out of the trophy cabinet, the rugged cross came forward and shined even brighter until it was front and center, and the case was called the spirit of Detroit. Awesome. I just thank God for your time. Well, I just thank, thank you, God. Brother. I just thank God thank for all you you're so doing. Thank you so much for this. I thank all <laughs> you're doing, all God's doing through you. And God may you continue good. to be blessed. God is You good. and your loved ones. Thank we, you so much. We just bless him. We just thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us. In Jesus' mighty name, we just thank you. Special prayer to those listening. Special blessing upon you and your loved ones this day in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and we just thank you thank you Heavenly Father amen. for this time in amen. Jesus name awesome amen and amen